We keep okay. waiting on somebody to come save okay. us. That's that Jesus mentality. Okay. But think about this. You black now. Yeah. Go back a few years. You was African-American. Mm -hmm. Go back a few years. You was colored. Go Ooh. back a few years. You was a Negro. We done changed by Go 18 times. Why do, we done changed. Why do they keep changing? Ain't nobody else changed. Why do they ain't, they ain't no super special Italian? They just Italian. They just Italian. So why have you been Negro, colored, uh, uh, black, yeah, African American? Now you want to be indigenous? Why? Like yeah, I'm saying, <laughs> yeah. why do you keep, you want to know why? Because you don't know. If you alive, subscribe. I know y'all. Everybody always talk about how much they like that name, and I gotta shout out Taz. Uh, smoking legal. Y'all make sure y'all go check out Smoking Legal on YouTube. Um, man, I ain't just. I'm not gonna tell you what he do. Just go check him out. And I was always house when it happened. If you're a live subscribe show, I really appreciate them for for that. But look, as I always say, make sure y'all subscribe, man. Make sure you like. Make sure you share. It really helps me out. And like I said, I'm monetized now, so you might get a little couple commercials here and there. But you know, just work with it. But look, today, dude, like. Uh, I'm so excited about this interview for this one reason. It's it, it's one of a kind. It's somebody that, like, I thought, and I'm going to introduce him. Uh, what up, True? Mike True, you know what I'm saying? What's up? And, um, but look, what's going on? Just um, introduce yourself, who you are, but then I'm going to tell them what I want to, what I want them to know. Man, I'm Chef Mike True, uh, Nashville native, east side, born and raised, uh, but I got I wear many hats, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. Right right now the hat that the city see is the the vegan chef, you know what I'm saying? But uh I'm an abolitionist, an activist, uh community uh member that, that fights for change. Yeah, you know I mean, I done did a lot of different things. I used to be in the music industry. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Look, 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 <laughs> look, look, true. I can call him what I want to. I've been knowing him. That's why all your new friends, you know what I mean? He got some yeah. new, new friends now, but but um, I I never saw you going like the route that you're going now. Mm -hmm. Like say for instance, if if we're talking about back going to kid, he used to like all my sister and shit. That's why we ain't, <laughs> we ain't get along like that. You know what I'm saying? He liking all well, my sister. Well, your sister like me too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't no one sided <laughs> thing. No, know? it wasn't. You know we that it was. was. My, uh, uh, I know? thought it was a one sided thing. Oh yeah, no, nah, you know that was my gal in middle uh, school, okay. man. She married now. Uh, yeah. She don't want you no more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She my got peace, a new baby there. Peace day. to her, brother. Okay. Peace <laughs> to her, brother. But no, it's serious. Stop, man. Let's play. Get serious. It's just a serious interview, but look, and back, you know, back then, it was it's, it, it was so different. But I saw I saw I saw you being true like a big agent or something. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like just the kind of route you were going. And then so when I saw the the route you was going, I was like. But see, they don't know you like I do. They, they I understand if true doing something, he doing it at one hundred percent. And so like. I just want to start off talking about like our pigment of our skin and the colorism and yeah. like why? Are, Cause I hear you talk about it a lot. We are the only community that claim a color. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Or why do we do that? Or is that not true? Or what are we wrong for doing that? Well, I think it's the miseducation side of it. Okay. Like, so a lot of times, you know, people live in a realm of belief and don't know. So mm -hmm. we just believe everything just yeah. because it's been given to us through a design. Mm -hmm. So colorism comes from Sir Francis Bacon. Okay. So if you understand who Sir Francis Bacon is, then you understand that when slavery was prominent, uh, black people held all the trades. Okay. Like when it comes to giving birth uh, or um, sharecropping, yeah, I mean, all yeah. of those things, carpentry, we did all the work. We built America. Yeah. So it was at one point then uh, this guy named Sir Francis Bacon was like, man, going at the route we going, eventually they're going to get smart enough to know that they are the ones building this country okay. yeah. and we don't know how to do anything. So we need to create a system that keeps them oppressed and up under our tutelage and not being able to branch out and use their gifts to build their own world because we yeah. need them to build ours. Look, 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 hold up, look. First of all, I want to, uh, Chef True brought food. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that, we'll get to that in a minute. 
because I want to stay on, on on this subject. So just just hold down. He bought food, bought drinks, and I want y'all to see like what he do and how he do it. Uh, one of my best friends, which is Dump, shop with him all the time, and that's all he eat is plant based vegan. Oh, we'll get to that. But uh, this is what I want to ask you though. How do we know who to trust? You know what I'm saying? Like with you know us coming up. We, I had the white Jesus on the wall. Mm-hmm. My grandmama did. Yeah, yeah, we all did. Yeah. And so with just religion and everything, what you're talking about, how do we know what to trust and where are we getting that information from? Because I'll trust you because I know where you come from and I know what mm-hmm. you stand for. But for the people that don't know you, how do we trust what you are saying? Is Google. Because okay. I, I seem, that seems to be the the... <laughs> The rebuttal. The That's yeah. the rebuttal like, reply. Well, I'm going to Google it. So anything you hear me say, Google it. Google yeah. who Sir Flint Francis Bacon is. Google what colorism is. Google what black code laws is. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And when we're talking about religion, then religion came from somewhere. Yeah. You see what I'm okay. saying? So if you understand what they, what's called backdating, mm-hmm. so we still are up under what they call the emperor who never died, rulership. Okay. So if you know who Vespasian is, who Titus, who Pope Constantine is, then you would understand that this is the design. Yeah. So the, even the word Jesus, first of all, the letter J didn't exist until 550 years ago. So most people don't know who Pierre Ramos III is. So Pierre Ramos III created the letter J playing with the letter I. Mm. So it couldn't have been of Jesus back in that day because Jay didn't exist. Then we'll go into the argument of, well, his name was Joshua or Yahweh, and the Y replaced the J, and so forth yeah. and so forth. And then you go into Hebrew, but Jesus wasn't Hebrew. Jesus was Aramic. And if then, if you're speaking of Aramic, then in the ancient Aramic goes back into Sanskrit, which is before written time. So mm-hmm. most people say that, you know, certain people wrote books. Yeah. Well, who wrote the first five books of the Bible? Okay, so 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 look, th- this is the thing about that, and I, I um, this is I'm gonna tell you me. I believe the Bible, but I don't believe the Bible. If you know what I'm saying, yeah. Like if if if, if I'm reading a story in the Bible about Jesus, I believe I believe in Jesus. I believe he was black. But if I'm reading a story, I'm not taking that story as in like that really happened because we understand that the Bible done been writ over 50,000 times. It might be what it is. So I'm just reading the story as in of a, a encouragement type of thing. But you know, that's still a design. You okay. see what I'm saying? No other culture needs encouragement mm. because they have culture. Yeah. They have ethnicity. They know yeah. who they are. So they don't need encouragement to be who they are. Yeah, facts. We are the only, so, you know, they had a slave Bible. Uh-huh. If you understand that, it wasn't no happy stuff in there for you. You see what I'm saying? And then, first of all, where was the first time Christ was ever mentioned? What was the document? In Bethlehem? Nope. It was called the Pauline Epistles. So it was considered the the epistles or the apostle of Paul. Uh-huh. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Who was originally Saul. But, again, all of these stories were backdated. None of them were written or existed in the time that they claimed they Do existed. Do Mike True in. believe in any of it? Well, No. That's okay. the, to okay. give you an, a simple okay. answer I, okay. because I don't That's believe I in anything. I, okay. I don't believe in anything. Okay. Either I know or I don't, don't know. know. Yeah. So I can tell you where it came from. Like how many people know what the Codex of Sinaiticus is? The Codex of Vaticus is? What the, uh, the, uh, but that's what you here for. That, that's why I got you here for to, 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 to <laughs> explain it to us. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Get in, get in, in, in depth of like what you b- believe. You know what I mean? And like, now nah, I'm on. I'm on board with you. Like yeah. I, I wouldn't even follow well, so you. So to I me, would. but I also understand this that humanity is fragile. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And emotional intelligence and critical thinking is at an all time low. Fact. So most people just feel. Mm-hmm. They don't know why they feel. They just feel. So when most people call waking up or being woke, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. When you first wake up, there's a certain anger or disdain that you have towards this system that was given to you. So Facts. most people go through that changing Jesus to black now. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because yeah. it, I can't disassociate with it because that's a part of my fabric. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because my grandmother gave that to me. Yeah. My mother gave that to me. My So disassociating with it didn't feel right. Mm-hmm. Not knowing what to pray about or how to pray don't feel right. Facts. So it's a redesign of the mind that has to be, you know what I mean, established before you can 
feel the way I feel. So I don't knock anybody for believing whatever you believe, <laughs> yeah. if that brings you comfort. Yeah. But I will pose the question is that if we go by timeline, the biblical times, first of all, the three major religions are all attached to the same father, Abrahamic law. You, so you got Islam. Well, first of all, you got Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Mm -hmm. They all stem from Abraham. They're Abrahamic religions. Yeah. So if that's the case, first of all, how do we get three different sects from the same father? That's like your daddy having only one mama. Y'all got one mama, but y'all got three different children that look totally different, different. and think totally different. Yeah. So you see what I'm saying? And then if you go timeline-wise, it's only 3,500 to 4,000 years ago. So if you believe in Adam and Eve, that means that humanity is only 4,000 years old. Oh, we know for a fact that the Dogon tribe existed for 20,000 years. We know that the Khoisan people of, of Africa existed for 200,000 years. Yeah. This is fact. Come on. Hey. This ain't got nothing this to do is. with feelings. So when we remove our feelings. Go Google it like he said. The Khoisan people. Yeah. Matter of fact, go as simple as the, the Pyramid of Giza. How old is the Pyramid of Giza? Well, older than 4,000 years. Let me so, ask you a question. So, you rapped at one time. Yeah. Why you stopped rapping? Uh, my heart wasn't in there no more. Because you know what type. I was a street dude. You that's, know what what, that, that's what I'm, you know what I'm saying? So, but I'm just saying, do, 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 that, do that line up with what, what you believe in now? Rap? Uh, I believe that, you know, it's an expression of our existence. You know what I'm saying? I believe what they doing now with it is another form of uh excuse my language because I know this is a sensitive word Do retarding your... retarding our people. Uh -huh. You see what I mean? It keeps us in a perpetual state of chasing fiat finances that mean nothing when we're speaking of true wealth. Yeah. Most people like I know a lot of rich people that are poor. You know, poor is a state of mind. You see what I'm saying? It has nothing to do with a financial situation or security. So to me, most people chasing a career not for the passion of the message uh -huh. or what the legacy they'll leave there is about to bag you okay. see what i'm saying and then look th this was true because uh, i've been i've been waiting for somebody to come here because i want to ask them about this and um i could i could have used anybody but, but you're here uh gideon's army mm -hmm. like who is Gideon's army what is Gideon? i know ev everybody has has been uh, this this was somebody said once, and they was like, "We like when Mike's uh true speak, but what 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 is getting into army? What is what what is the whole push with that? And even with uh getting funded and all that, who started it? What is the push with that? So I'm no longer with Gideon's army, but um, it started in 2010 with Rashida Fatuga. Okay, and then in 2019, and between 2010 and 2018. They wrote something called the Driving While Black Report. Okay, it's, it's, it's six hundred pages of reports where they basically uh, went and did the research to show profiling and over policing in black communities, mm -hmm. which became something so major because now it's used in court cases all over America yeah. to prove how the police use dis disenfranchised communities to meet quotas. Okay, so. It started with that. So me, him being on LT, end up uh, shout out to him being on LT. getting with uh, Rashida Fatuga. And shout out to Bishop Marcus Campbell, rest in peace. Ooh, he Bishop, called me. Yeah. So, you know, I fed, I worked with Bishop, Mar uh, Bishop Marcus Campbell with his uh, Youth Enrichment Summer Camp program. Mm -hmm. So since 2017, I helped feed 200 children uh, every summer to ensure that they, you know, had the things that they needed. Okay. That's another story. But so Bishop called me. And was like, hey, I'm going to get this lady named Rashida your number. I think that you will be a good fit with what they're trying to do. Okay. So that's the only reason. Like, I didn't know her or know. I never heard about getting Yeah, but you was one of the faces at one time. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, but, everybody, so you know Bishop what I mean? stamped her. Okay. And, like, it's like when certain people call you and say, hey, they cool. Yeah. You yeah. automatically, you oh, know what I'm saying, just, the it, door open. It's automatic. Yeah, so he opened the door, oh. and I went and did an interview. The students loved me, you know what I'm saying? And they actually picked us to be the first violence interrupter. So it was me. And then when I got there, I had already been working with LT with his um, program out south where he was feeding uh, the, uh, the, uh, the turkey drive. Yeah. Yeah, all that. So Christmas. I just knew that 
he had he had got out, I think, in 2016 or something. So I mm -hmm. knew he was trying to get into that lane and all that. So I told Rashida, I was like, if y'all only got positions for a couple people, I think you should give it to LT. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So I passed the ball to mm. LT, like, man, put him in the game. Because I already do it. No, I already got you know, a lot of stuff going on. Give it to LT. So mm. she ended up, you know what I'm saying, being able to get me, LT, and him, Bino. Together. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that the, right the, there, the faces, you know what I mean, it. yeah, just uh, propelled us to you know start doing um, so like basically we would uh walk the communities and just talk with people and see what they needed, see why people were doing what they were doing, why they was in the situations, and us being connected to the streets from our past, it I'm allowed okay, us man. to be what they call a credible yeah. message. Yeah, but and, and so um, how does how does you how do you get away from getting his army and like even with the funding and i just want to talk about so that people because keep talking about funding so that's first what, of all okay, that's what we want nobody to know. ever gave us any money that's the illusion okay. so this is oh, what, what so do y'all know who the fbi are i'm sure you do oh federal of bureau course. of investigation the, the same one that, okay and the, the cia them. they have a yeah. a program it's called cointel and then they have another program it's called disrupt discredit and dismantle okay so they use this system and they know black people will turn on their own people for anything oh it can They'll be a dollar. Pay, like so when a we talk about cent. like y'all <laughs> seen judas and the black messiah you know what i mean they actually had a black man infiltrate the black panthers and get that man killed you see Thanks. what i'm saying so what 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 the city allowed was the only heroes in the hood to be discredited and attempt to dismantle but there was never no proof other mm -hmm. than a white man talking Fact. you see what i'm yeah, saying phil yeah. williams first of all you got to ask yourself why is a high profile investigator going after a non-profit organization Listen, ooh, that was like and but, but you got to think for for me i know you personally mm -hmm. i know him be no personally and i know um lt not that much but personally mm. And so this is what I'm saying. But at the end of the day, like say for instance, if we we got a hood and we are policing our own hood, mm -hmm. I mean, but is that good or bad if the if the crime is going down? So and mind stuff, you, us and so doing and, that. and they're saying people are getting paid for that. Yeah, but That's see, what first of all, what they need to understand is we didn't get paid at first. Okay, so any p payment that we got, we earned that because we we got donations for that. Yeah. You okay. see what I'm saying? Yeah. So we got, we had private donations. We had grants that we were writing. The state never gave us anything. Mm -hmm. So to be honest with you, what they did was they offered us a million dollars, told us to come and speak at this event, but we had to formally announce that we wanted the million dollars. I told them like, this seemed like a setup. Like, why would they just but, but, give us a million dollars and then tell us, but, you know, I'm not in charge of certain situations. So I allow, I just, I showed up, I spoke, did what I, I do. And, you know, they you they said that we're asking for a million dollars when initially they told us to go ask for the million Look, dollars. Look, guess, guess, guess what, you You know, I, I mess with you. And we never tough. got the million dollars. Okay, but I, I, I mess with <laughs> Okay, that's cool. I mess with you super tough. But um, do you think it's like, you know, we so kind of messed up with like, I ain't going to buy down to you. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? But do you think it's also a process on getting that money? Well, first of and, all, and, 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 and we kind of humbling, like, because that's what, look, true, we know you're going to stand for what's right. Mm -hmm. We know you're going to stand for what's right. But do you bend a little bit when somebody's talking about giving you a million dollars? I don't bend to nobody. Y'all heard what I said. Like, I, and see, that's the thing okay. about me is. They tried to paint us as being radical. You see what I'm saying? Like, we actually flipped the senator seat. So what you don't realize is this was a design. We were becoming too powerful, and we were black. Yeah. We were a black organization well, yeah. that are getting senators elected, yeah. that are getting police chiefs fired, Ooh. that are getting Ooh. DAs uh, demoted. Ooh. You see what I'm saying? Ooh. The assistant district attorney got fired. You see what I'm saying? The Originally, Chief Anderson stepped down. You see what I'm saying? Nigga, LT helped pick the new chief of police. Ooh. Working on that board. So Drake. Again, yeah, Drake. Okay. So oh, we, okay. what I'm saying is that we were becoming too politically connected and powerful. So 
you know, they use the old same tactic. And what's funny is we as a people keep falling for the same foolishness. One thing I will say, we have never di did anything illegal. We have never misappropriated funds. Yeah. And we yeah. have never taken anything Dang. from anyone. Yeah. So, and especially the state. So the state never gave us anything Dang. to misappropriate. Yeah. So when they were talking about a hundred thousand dollars or something, we had an accountant that did our taxes wrong. Yeah. And when Ooh. they redid the taxes, it showed that everything was accurate. We don't like all we ever did was give to our people. We gave over a million dollars direct cash to the community of North Nashville and abroad. Not just some toilet paper and a sandwich. We gave cash. What made Mike want to be a, a part of? Cause you from my east mm -hmm. and um LT from outside. south and yeah, I'm being from can't, can't be from north. So how did y'all three get together? Like and through uh yeah, you know I mean Rashida all, Fatuga okay. organized okay. it all. But you know, I was born out north on Seventh okay. Avenue. So I lived out north into the fourth grade. Okay. And my first time ever coming to East Nashville was North Fifth. I lived right <laughs> across the street from Fat Boy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. In that yellow house on North Fifth yeah. right there. Yeah. So the first, I, I didn't come to out east until the fourth grade. Wow. And I went to DuPont, uh, and we used to catch the bus right there on, at Vernon Winfrey in North Fifth. Well, the yeah. first day I stood on the bus stop, I seen somebody... Uh, get dumped in the bushes. And the, How did you feel? Man, I'm just looking like, what's going on? So the bus driver pull up. I'm like, they finna get in trouble. The bus driver looking like, man, if you don't get out the bushes and come This is up, the regular He's seen them dump them in the bush, though. So I'm like, the... the, the Bus driver ain't finna say nothing. So it was just a different, yeah, I mean, I yeah. didn't understand. And, you know, I never had a name brand pair of tennis shoes mm -hmm. until I got to Glenn, like yeah. fifth or sixth grade. Bang. So to me, I just didn't understand certain dynamics because my daddy was born in 1939. Mm. So the type of upbringing I had was different than other people. Bang. So I wasn't a materialistic person. I wasn't, we yeah. didn't eat canned goods. We ate fresh stuff out the garden and stuff like that. So to me, just seeing, it was a, culture shock for me yeah, you know what i'm saying yeah. but me being who i am i just i was a fighter too so i just wasn't finna oh you never you, go but you i never went but i didn't understand a lot of it so yeah. some stuff that like people would be like man true didn't react because i didn't know how to react like why is this nigga mad you know what i'm saying so so, so let me ask you your question um uh, true so so now the push that you are on and with with nashville what is Nashville supposed to do to bag it up? Because I see you guys in these meetings and like, like, you know, me, I'm like, when, when you speak, mm -hmm. it really means something because you can tell it's just coming from a authentic place. You know what I'm saying? So like these me town meetings and stuff, are we missing out on anything? Or are we supposed to be there or what's like? Well, in order to create legislative change, okay. you got to start locally. Mm -hmm. See, we worried about presidents and governors and all of that. When, to be honest with you, the funds that are su supporting your city has to do with the city council. Facts. So yeah. the first thing that you, if you ain't thinking about nothing, you should think about who is your city council yeah, yeah. or women. And a lot of, and then they got what they call the black caucus mm -hmm. on there. Okay. And the black <laughs> caucus, and then so they already is separatism within the council. Yeah. The fact, because first of all, if me and you play on the same football team, uh -huh. would you be the black side of the team and he be the white side? You see what I'm saying? We just the same team. We the same I, team. I, I, I would think. We the same team. Yeah. But unfortunately, our system is designed for a majority, minority process. Yeah. So we got black people who are on the city council are considered the minority uh -huh. or the black caucus. And yeah. they always keep one number less than the majority. So let's say it's 20 uh, majority, it'll be 19 mm -hmm. minority. So no matter what, the vote, as long as they always vote for what they want, we'll never get ours passed. We don't right. have the votes to do it. So we always are fighting uh, a uphill battle. We have to flip at least two or three chairs in order to get anything going. So we got to get the majority caucus to go with what we want in order to create change. So if you truly want to create change, start finding out who your local aldermen are, your oh, councilmen, oh, oh, oh. 
things of that nature, start there and then move up because you got what they call state and federal, then you got local and city. So it's like it's levels to well, to, but 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 you got things like and people uh we finna get to the food, man. I got because I'm just I'm just kind of stuck here. But it's people that actually kind of uh look up to you guys. And so how do we know who to get behind or vote? Is voting cool? Because you know where we come from, we never even thought voting was you know, cool. Man, that's a that's a loaded question. To me, I truly don't support voting. Okay. But the reason why I say that is because I'm an intelligent brother. So I've you watched. Always, get what, look, you know, I ain't saying this. Shout out to the truth. You always have, like, always has been intelligent. And, like, look, true, get what? You know, true, a light skinned nigga like Drake. They thought they could pick on him. True always fall back. You know what I'm saying? Like, you yeah. think about it. You always been picked on. Yeah. Light skinned. Yeah, you used to call me white boy. <laughs> oh. Man, that right there gets you fired on. Right you know what I'm saying? And so, like I said, for me, with you speaking up like you do, like you got to think, I'm, I'm saying like, nigga, that's true. You know what I mean? Everybody yeah. don't know you, but true been speaking up and taking yeah. up for itself. Yeah. And so, um, do you think from just from being a kid, that's what kind of built where you are now? Yeah. Well, I've always respected the underdog because okay. I understand, because I see like, I think I was given a certain awareness yeah. at a very young age. So I was aware when other people were not. So yeah. to me, it was always a gift. When did you occurrence. find your awareness though? Because we was in uh, middle school you, and we was in, we went to middle uh Glen, Highland Heights. I was supposed to go to Maplewood, but my but sister you made me go to Hillsburg. Okay, so when did yeah. you kind of find that awareness of like where you are now? Because I, I was, really respect it, just to be honest with you, and I wouldn't even say that. Yeah. Since you know, I was a kid though, like so I was always what they would call a bad kid. You know what I mean? And but I, I found out that I was bad because I was bored. Yeah. So school was boring. It was too easy. Yeah. I used to make straight A's. Oh, it was come on. Easy. I, you know what I'm saying? Easy. So you know what I mean? Yeah. I used to, you know what I mean, be in school and I do all my work. Then I look over there and you'd be like, bro, you still make go to answers. You know what I'm saying? So so they used to say I was always talking in school. So my daddy for punishment, he used to make me read the Bible. Mm -hmm. And he used to make me Ooh, read the encyclopedias and write essays on it so from the age of four to ten between that period i used to like on some cat williams shit i, I didn't read no three thousand books but, <laughs> but i did read the encyclopedia a, a to z and they used to have a lot of the books that teach you about different lands and uh presidents and all that stuff so i just had a a plethora of knowledge that was given to me at a very young age let, let me ask you a question uh true and um uh, this is is a real like for us we want to know even with your dressing now like is that you like like that it do is that a symbol or something of like cuz you know we you know we still dressing we got on t-shirt or something but like we like we we respect that you know what I'm saying but is that a simple symbol of like this who I am you know what I'm saying it's more of a i understand that we are visual people okay so to me, you know, I still wear the hoodies. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. You know I mean, but in certain situations and dynamics, I want to show the regalness because we are the the kings and queens of this nation. We I, built this world. 100%. So, you know what I'm saying? If you don't, don't ever feel bad for dressing that part. Like if you go back to the 50s, 40s, 60s, it wasn't until the 80s yeah. that we started dressing like what they would call thugs or gangsters. Okay. We were always tailored to the team. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Even when we didn't have nothing, we made something. Yeah, facts. You see what I'm saying? So I remember cleaning my shoes with a toothbrush, and you know Ooh, what I'm saying? We are. Or sticking the toilet <laughs> paper in sure, my yeah. cousin, uh, <laughs> shoes so that I could, you know what I'm saying, rock them things. So you know was you mean? poor when you grew up? Uh, Man, oh, uh, yeah. Or uh, uh, was you like middle class or high class? To be honest with you, I don't, we Seriously. wasn't poor. Okay. Because my daddy owned his own construction company. Ooh, I didn't know but that. But my daddy, Back then? yeah, my daddy didn't believe in foolishness uh -huh. my daddy didn't waste money he didn't buy nothing just to appease somebody yeah he didn't believe in material mm -hmm. so the only reason i started wearing name brand clothes was because my sister my sister was like them boys is getting too big you need to start so my sister used to be on my daddy and make her make him give her money to go buy shoes and stuff and all that yeah you know i mean so i didn't start getting 
like cool stuff until I got with my sister because my dad ended up going to the penitentiary mm. and he died in the penitentiary uh, like 30 days before he was supposed to get out. Wow. How, what, what, what year was that? This was in 93. Ooh, so that was yeah. the fault. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, was right when we was. Yeah, that, was when you was, that was right when you was liking my sister <laughs> around this same time. Yeah. Like, but look, true, guess what? And we got a lot. We 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 we, we gonna keep going. I'm ready to get into this food. Yeah, we um, can do that. Uh, this one, um, what's my boy name? Yaki. Yaki awake. I love Yaki awake. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And um, you remind me so much of him. I've been watching you. And you know what I'm saying? I just I just love what I love what you stand for. I love you stand for health and wealth and you know what I'm saying and us taking care of our body and stuff. So uh where did the food in come in at? Just well, with from my father, what you do. Again. Okay, vegan, all vegan, where did the food come come to? Well, you know, I've been a chef for fifteen years now. I didn't know that. So yeah. I left the music industry. To be honest with you, I became a chef by I guess destiny. Like, when I left the music industry, I was on probation for 11 years. And I was on, I was uh, with the record label, with Legendary Records and stuff. And they, when I, I, for the first four years, they dealt with me being in the music industry. Yeah. So I finished them four years and then ended up getting in trouble in Georgia, then here and getting more probation. And they was like, look, you need to come with a check still. You mean- like, you can't keep... <laughs> Yeah. Coming in here talking about you work for yourself and got your own business because I never worked for nobody. So Ooh, wow. even in my whole existence of becoming a chef, I'm 41 and only worked for five years for other companies. And yeah. I did what they call infiltrate, educate, vacate. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So I only work to learn. So I'm what they call an autodidact. Autodidact means to teach yourself. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm a self-taught, classically trained chef that it's done took me all the way to Africa to yeah, you know I mean, all over the so world. So what what did you bring today to eat? Uh, uh let me um I'm let, 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 give me give me give me a plate, oh. I'm in <laughs> yeah, give me a plate. And we'll, you know what I'm saying, like hit this this what I've been waiting on, you know what I'm saying, all day, you know what I'm saying? Like um one thing I'm gonna say true, everybody always Brag on, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. you you the guy, you know what I'm saying? So, ooh, it's fresh, hot too. Fresh, yeah. hot too. Mm. Which sandwich is this? Is Just it? bust it open and I'll let okay. you know. So, I brought you a fresh pressed watermelon juice, a blueberry tea. What's that one? Like, look at that bacon on it. That's the uh, lemon pepper stepper. <laughs> Woo! That's the lemon pepper stepper. Lemon. You know, it's Trippy's Plant Based Dine. It's a food truck right up on Dixon Road. So, that's a plant based chicken sandwich. With plant based bacon, cheese, Ooh. lettuce, tomato, Ooh. and trippy sauce. Yeah. Cool. I put this on God. <laughs> this tastes like a real chicken sandwich. That's the whole part. That's why it's called trippies. Like everything on my menu is going to trip you out. God. You got two more sandwiches, so. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop. Yeah. You might want to hold tight. That make me feel like we eating meat for nothing. You are. But that's a whole nother conversation. Like I said, I can tell people why, but you know, everybody got all their own thought process. My granny ate meat all the time, but uh-huh. you know, I'm also a food safety manager. So that's one thing that drove me. That's the the hot chicken uh sandwich. And y'all know I won the hot chicken festival in 2013, so I got an award-winning hot chicken recipe. We eat meat for nothing. nothing. <laughs> Yeah, you don't need it. And everybody always talking about protein and don't know what protein is. You got 80,000 protein. So what protein. is this? That's a pea protein chicken. It's made with pea protein and wheat gluten. And wheat gluten is when you wash flour. It's the uh, binder that's left behind. Oh, here. <laughs> we smacking, dog. Man! <laughs> I'm sorry I got eating y'all thing. Mm. Hold on. And then the last one is the Philly cheese steak. Okay. What's That's this? a blueberry fruit tea. And then Y'all jelly. <laughs> Woo, we, had, we eating good on the show tonight. Oh. Yeah. Some fresh pressed watermelon juice. And I think that's a, a, a peach coconut tea right there. Real quick truth for our own, before I taste uh, this one. With us being where well, we come up on meat and, and our parents just taught us everything, how do we go against that grain? 
by self-educating and stop realizing traditionalism has, has murdered us. Like we don't evolve because we too focused on tradition. Mm-hmm. We too focused on reliving the past instead of creating a future. So I think that we should honor our past. That's what they mean by saying Kofa. We should honor and respect the, the, the ancestors of those that came before us. But we have to understand that your great grandmother ain't living in this time. Okay. So her mind and philosophy isn't designed for 2024. I've been saying this uh, before I tried this sandwich and I want to uh, talk about this. I've been saying this for forever. Do you think our people was taught wrong? And that's why they kind of just taught us what they Let know. Me, I got a question for you. Are we in America? Are we in America? Are we? Are we in America? <laughs> yeah. So then, yes, that, that just by you being in America lets you know you were taught wrong because you were not a human. You were chattel. You were cattle. You were something that could be sold like a, a cigarello at the, the Z Mart. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So the fact that, you know, we come from an oppressive state, that already lets you know. You know what I'm saying? That's a. You answering your own question. By you being in America, you know you were taught wrong. Because <laughs> you were never taught, like, you know I mean, the education system, the medical system, all of that is designed. So that's the Philly cheese steak. It's made with Ooh, a Taiwanese bean curd. Hold on, hold on. Let me hand you this. <laughs> Let me hand you this. I think we <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude, we, get what I've been waiting on this all day. Man, That's a Taiwanese dude. bean curd, peppers, onion, mushroom, cashew cheese sauce. And an A1 ranch. We eat meat for nothing. You don't need it. So, you know, it's all about texture. First of all, meat don't got no flavor. Okay. Unless you're talking about some Wagyu that's aged or something of that nature. But most times, like when you say you like chicken, everybody sees in a chicken a certain way that that's what you like. You like the herbs that go into it. You like the crispy flour when it's fried. You don't really like the chicken, but the chicken has the texture or that pool. Or just a, a bite. Yeah, but so the texture is what you're seeking when you eat meat. The flavors all come from the earth. That's why my product is called True to Earth because I try to keep everything is this close mushroom? to earth. It's mushroom and bean curd. So it's a Taiwanese bean curd, which is basically like uh, soybeans that are turned into a... A piece of steak, basically. Damn. I apologize. <laughs> Mm-mm. True, I'm just, but what made True just, like, just want to just change it up? Like, cause it just, it really came out the blue. Yeah. Well, believe it or not, though, it came out the blue to the public. Okay. But I've been doing this since I was 18. So I used to always be healthy. If anybody knew me in the hood, like was around me between, I mean, when I was 18, they knew that I didn't eat pork. I didn't eat beef. All I ate was chicken. You know what I'm saying? Like I ate faithfully chicken, Mrs. Winners. You know what I mean? Every day. So I I just got on a health uh, kick. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, I got into weightlifting for a while Mm -hmm. and got big than the motherfucker. So to me, it was just, I really cared about my body. You know what I mean? Like, most people don't realize. So, what's actually wrong with meat, though, with us? Like I said, even though it's a, we came up on it, and is it any meat that's good to not eat? Not in America. So, okay. what made me become plant-based was I went to Africa. So, I went to Africa for a little while, and when I was in Africa, we went to the butcher shop, and the meat don't look like what it looked like on our shells like mm-hmm. in Kroger's how it look bright red and stuff yeah. so when you go to the butcher shops in Africa the meat look brown looking it look like you'll see it and be like man I don't want that but they ain't putting no preserve if you kill something it immediately starts to decompose mm-hmm. so ask yourself how did something get killed we got we got at least say at least a week I'm gonna give yeah. them a week you know what I'm saying when it's really longer than that but I'm gonna be gentle and say a week so seven days ago, you kill a chicken or a cow, and now it's at the store. Seven days has passed, and it still look fresh. Mm-hmm. How is that? <clears throat> well, and then, cause, cause, look, I thought about something before you came. When I called you earlier, you could cook some, which mm-hmm. I um I appreciate it. 
that's the best. I done had a couple of times. I swear I put on my life. That's the I ain't never had nothing like it. Look, oh, you still have it? You eating my stuff? Man, I done went through it. Oh, yeah, go through it then. You got a little piece over here left. Yeah, here. and just with it being what it like. How do we know that's better than meat? Like, how do we like? How do we tell with our body intake? Well, you need to be. A, people need to first of all learn their blood type, okay, and learn what uh, feels good to you. You know, a lot of people say, "Man, I I shouldn't eat them pork chops last night. Mm-hmm. I got a headache today." Ooh, you see what I'm saying? No, so if definitely. you can recognize that, why I would have. you eat another I don't pork, eat pork chop? because of that? Yeah, why would you eat another pork chop if you can recognize you get a headache every time? Mm. So people, man, it goes back into the religious side of it. Everybody say they believe in God. Everybody goes to church and they put on these these shows for the world to mm-hmm. think that they're good men and good women. But in reality, the in the Bible it tells you God does not dwell in temples made by man's hands. Mm-hmm. So what temple do God dwell in? What's the only place that you can think of that would be considered a temple that God made, not man? Yeah. Because this house I'm sitting in, somebody built this. Even with it coming, uh, one thing I respect what you said when I called you earlier, and it was out the blue, and I hated to do that. I was like, man, can you make some food for the show? Because I want to actually, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, show the people. And you was like, well, I got to make it before I come. Because so how long can this stuff kind of sit out? Can we kind of, if, if, if I come buy some of this stuff from you, can I put it in the refrigerator and. Yeah, eat it the okay. next day. It's all okay. the same. It's going to, a lot of times. So how long flavor. do it need to sit out just being hot? You know what I mean? Like, cause you had to well, make it to fresh. To me personally, I'm a quality person. So okay. I want you to, I want it to be cooked and consumed immediately. You know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> but if it's sitting, it shouldn't be an issue. Okay. You know what I mean? But go back. Cause to they say a lot saying. of people get sick. Well, some of it. well, you get sick from meat. It's called a pathogens. Okay. So when we was talking about like a lot of stuff, we we jumping around like the food and meat industry is not what it used to be. Okay. So the first of all, what we see as a grocery store has to do with war culture, mm-hmm. and we don't even know it. So prior to the World Wars and World War Ones and Twos, we didn't have canned goods. We didn't have processed meat wow. on shelves. We didn't have processed foods and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. But when we went to war, we needed to feed a lot of people like fast. And we needed food to be preserved for long periods of time to travel from America to wherever we were over there colonizing. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So they created the, what we call now is the, you know what I'm saying? The food industry. And if you Google how many chickens are consumed a year, it'll make you wonder where are they growing all of that. And first of all, if we know how fast the chicken grows or how how long it takes for a chicken to go from egg to shelf, like KFC, it's a six-week process. From the time that egg hatched to the time... Is Kentucky Fried Chicken chicken. and KFC two different chicken places? I I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know, but one thing I do know is that they're... The chickens that they are using are genetically modified and given antibiotics well, they said to that. grow fast. Yeah, and a lot of things are now. They just created a way. They have to put certain stuff on packaging now, like the uh, labeling laws. Yeah. So if you'll start seeing now bioengineered I'm t- food, a- antibiotic, I shop. But they've been giving that to you. But they it was no laws to tell them that they had to tell you they were giving it to you. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Again, true. And I'm gonna say this. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. Why are we eating meat? Because if I pulled up at KFC and they gave me that chicken sandwich I just ate, yeah. I wouldn't have knew nothing. Yeah. If you if you wouldn't have if, if you'd have said, Rick, man, I'm gonna bring you a chicken sandwich, and you would have brought me that, I wouldn't have knew nothing. Yeah. yeah. So like I said, it's just by design, man. You know what I mean? So I honestly, and this to 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 all the meat eaters, there's nothing wrong with meat. Let's okay. say that. You okay. know what I'm saying? What's wrong with it to me? is that we want to create life, but we eat death. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, nothing has to die for humanity to live. Mm. And once you realize that, then you realize why our children, why we, why is everybody so angry? You know what I'm saying? Why is a black man will kill another black man before he smack a white person? Mm. You see what I'm saying? You'll shoot a nigga, but you wouldn't even smack a white man. But why is that? But by design, 
You see what I'm saying? Because it's familiar. You see what I'm saying? It's easier to step on what you familiar. Like, we grew up around roaches. We'll kill a roach in a heartbeat. Yeah, it ain't right. nothing to step on a goddamn roach. It's familiar. But if you see a tarantula, I bet you ain't finna step on that motherfucker. If you see a big ass tarantula, one of them goddamn Australian Man, spiders, you ain't, you gonna you ain't finna step because it ain't run. familiar. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it's easier <laughs> to harm things that are familiar to you. You get what I'm saying? So we, it's, it's a design that we really truly have to wake up and start doing our own research and realizing that everything we were taught was given to us to keep us oppressed, like the educational system. Yeah. And they got, now they creating a divide between us as a culture. Wow. So now you go to school, become an AKA or a doctor, <laughs> a lawyer. Now you look AKA. down on the dude that got his pants sagging. Wow. Yeah. Not realizing that that dude with his pants sagging could be an engineer that changed the, the way the whole world operates. But where he was positioned in life, you know what I'm saying, his geological location created a victim rather than a victorious mind. So we first got to get out of the victim mind. That's why I really do believe we should stop being taught about slavery. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Being us learning about slavery. and Because I'm going to be honest with you, when I first started doing my research, I thought black people came from slavery. Mm. I didn't know that it was that we were kings at first. Yeah. I didn't know it was anything yeah. prior to that. You right. see what I'm saying? So, and if you ask the average child who's being taught, they think black people come from slavery. Right. Yeah, when yeah. in reality, we literally built the world. We civilized everybody. You see what I'm saying? It wouldn't be no civilizations if it wasn't for people of color. Yeah, right. you get what I'm saying. But again. We didn't even call ourselves colors. It ain't no black and white. First of all, that's a color system. Name if you go to Italy, ain't nobody in Italy saying that they, they white. Say, they just Italian. I'm Italian. They, they, they tell you. Yeah. You go to you go to uh, Pakistan. They go anywhere Asia. But we live in in America, and 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 we say we're black. They're white. And Chinese and all that. And so I mean, we live in. But not, but so you how do we that? change that? You do it by yourself. See, that's the thing. We okay. keep waiting on somebody to come save okay. us. That's that Jesus mentality. Okay. But think about this. You black now. Yeah. Go back a few years. You was African American. Mm -hmm. Go back a few years. <laughs> you was colored. Go Ooh. back a few years. You was a neat. We done changed by Go 18 back a few times. Years. Why do we but, changed. Why do they keep changing? Ain't nobody else changed. Why do they ain't they ain't no super special Italian? They just Italian. They just Italian. So why have you been Negro, colored, uh uh, black, yeah, I'm African American. Now you want to be indigenous? Why, like, yeah, I'm saying, <laughs> yeah. why do you? You want to know why? Because you don't know, you don't know who you are. So we can tell you anything. Okay. So look, so with with you being on the level that you are, and you understand that, do we do do some black people get a pass because they really just don't know? Well, first of all, I don't. When you say get a pass, everybody get a pass because okay. at the end of the day, we still have to, you got to live, you got your own life to live. Uh -huh. you know what I mean? yeah. And you can believe whatever you want to believe. But it's, a, it's, it's funny how people who think like me, I don't subjugate anybody. I don't care what you believe. Yeah. You can believe that Jesus is coming to save you. Thanks. How long you, yo, how many people been believing that and for how long? And how, has that system of thought changed your community? Mm. What has Jesus done for your community? Granny still, you know what I mean? They, the gentrifiers still got Granny House. You know what I'm saying? They still come, they, like, if you understand what Del Morocco was on Jefferson Street. First of all, we we live in, we're in Nashville. Yeah. Broadway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Honky Tonk Central. Yeah. Do you know that that's a stolen design? It was uh, on Jefferson Street. Uh, Jefferson Street, Music City, uh, come from black people. The Jubilee Singers. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So everybody came to Nashville to go to Buck Cannon and Jefferson. We had our own trolley system. We had 600 black-owned businesses up and down Buck Cannon and Jefferson. And we stayed to ourselves. Broadway was what you call commerce. That's why it's a street called commerce yeah, right commerce, there. Yeah, Acme commerce. Feed House is on the corner right there. Why? Because it was close to the river. So what they did was create something called redlining. And that's why we was raised out east. Okay, but let me ask you a question, though. You're a business owner. Mm -hmm. And we understand uh, it costs so much to get business in, in Nashville. 
So are we dependent on our people to come support us to keep us going, or are we depending on all the out of towners and stuff that's coming in? Don't depend on nobody. Okay. Don't depend on anybody. Okay. Create quality product that can be marketed to anybody. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And it's certain sectors that no matter what, like people can always got to eat. I don't care who you are, black, Almost white, Asian, yeah. or in between. Yeah. You got to eat. Yeah. You're going to die. Yeah. So funeral homes, like mm -hmm. that's something you yeah. know I mean, that's going to always pop. Everybody's going to get sick at some point in their life. So the medical field, so it's certain sectors of business that no matter what, people, there's a need for it. Yeah. So now what, what's happening, though, is that the Food Network made being a chef and made food something popular. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people calling themselves chefs or calling themselves these things without the formal training or the, you know, like me. I Do you have schooling for chef? I wasn't schooled, but this okay. is the thing, though. So in order to be calling yourself a chef, you have to have held that title okay. before. You see what I'm saying? So I've held the title as a chef yeah. in corporate America. Yeah. I was the only, I worked for the Travel Center of, of America. That's why I first got in back in 2008. I uh, started working at the Country Pride Restaurant for the Travel Centers of America. I, know what I worked my way up from a line cook to a general manager. Yeah. You couldn't be a general manager and have a felony. So the dude who owned Travel Centers of America gave me a, a pass to be able to get yeah, you know I mean the general manager title. So during a three year period, I learned a lot about the business of the food mm -hmm. industry. And then I left there and started my own business. And then in 2012 or 2013, I ended up getting a, a job as a line chef for the hotels. And then I worked my way up to sous chef and head chef. Is Mike True um disappointed in the black community in Nashville on a level of trying to move towards something? great i don't get disappointed in okay people for making okay. decisions but one thing i will say is that we are distracted okay we are disassembled and most people who you think are concerned ain't like mm -hmm. it's and me being i've sat in many rooms yeah oh, you know what I'm saying? We, come on mo most and most definitely most definitely there's a showmanship that so it's a lot of people who focus on what the cameras see mm -hmm. instead of on real change yeah because think about this like you asked about that million dollars, they still ain't gave it to it. They've been talking about it for two, three years. And they'd rather discredit us and dismantle us rather than they could have gave us. So the nobody's phone. getting paid on getting his army. Well, they get paid, but it ain't got nothing to do with the state. Okay. okay. You see what I'm saying? It yeah. comes from our own earnings. It comes from what we do. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So we got our own private donations and grants. Okay. So we write our own grants okay. and we were getting like after the tornado came. We put the city back together. What people don't know is that it was a map that showed all the, the, the damage and everything. Gideon's Army created that map. We went and found all of the spots that needed attention. We created the, the, the system that got everybody to support from Donaldson to North Nashville to everywhere. So when people were getting food trucks sent out, when people were getting things, we were sending that. Why, why do, uh, for Mike True, why do you do it? Like what, what you people. do, why do you do it? For my people, period. Because when you got a certain level of awareness, you, you know what I mean? You just got a different responsibility. So the the way I see the world is different from the other, uh, other people. But I also, with me having this sight, I can't judge. You see what I'm saying? So I'm never going to be disappointed in what others are doing. doing yeah but i always tell people don't complain about circumstances you're not willing to change what do you, okay so now um i gotta go i can go anywhere with oh i can go anywhere with this nigga. but i, I love him but i want him because i want him and i want because I, I respect his opinion and so now what about the rap community in nashville well it's always been the same you know everybody here has the i'm already rich or i'm already i've already made it mentality <laughs> So, you know, I you, was... You about the third person that came here and said that. But, you know, and we did a lot of major stuff that people, you know what I mean, like, didn't even know we were doing. Okay. We were really doing major stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Doing, like, legendary records, man. We had Kingpin, Skinny Pimp on the label. Uh -huh. We uh, had a guy named Rod Anthony who was helping manage, who had a lot to do with Bun B and G's. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a lot of... We had a lot of support. We were in Double XL, Source... You know what I'm saying? At the time, back Murder Dog, back when oh, all this all stuff was them, going that's, on. That's, 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 we was that's on BET at one point, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But I just feel like 
everybody clicked up, you know what I'm saying, and not realizing that unity is truly. So when we say community, community just means common unity. Uh -huh. So we haven't found a common source to attach to. So, people try yeah. to use God, but nobody, God ain't never going to bring the people together. The reason why is it's because people going to bring the people together. But see, that's the thing, though. We'll all come together and then we'll realize that, you know what? You think different than me. So you the devil or you, uh, you bad yeah, or you good. Yeah, so yeah. we allow ideologies and thought processes to keep us separated. It's a design. Like, I promise you, there is no greater or less than. All there is is humanity. Yeah. Now, there's when you're talking about upper class, middle class, all of that is a design. Why? What do uh, you actually need to live? Question. And uh, I want to talk about the sea boss a little bit real quick, but not 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 right now. But why should we trust Mike True? You shouldn't. You should trust yourself. Ooh, okay. Trust yourself. But we all got to be teachers, and I mean, I can go but teachers. I'm a and... universal student. See, the okay. thing is that I'm I'm only a teacher because I know something that you don't know. Exactly. But I'm, I'm still. I didn't learn so much tonight. But I'm a what student. A... You see what okay. I'm saying? I'm a universal student before anything. Okay. So I don't call myself a teacher. Other people do. You see what I'm saying? I don't call myself anything. Other people do. Facts. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't tell anybody to trust me. Listen to what I say, and then go do what you're gonna do anyways. Google it. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because now Google is everybody's god. Anything you can't say nothing. Without somebody be like, uh, let me even Google your granny yeah. gonna Google it to see it, if you know what you're talking about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They gonna, <laughs> so don't trust nothing I say. Google it. Because so, obviously Google will make you feel more safer than I will. That's crazy. And so now CMOS, uh, we hear a lot about CMOS. What does CMOS actually do for us? Because everybody's kind of, think about it, everybody's pushing that. Mm -hmm. Everybody's selling that. They're selling their peanut butter and that and all type of different. <laughs> what, ask yourself this. What's the time frame of you really hearing about CMOS like that? I'm going to say about 2019. 2019, 2020. What's, 2020. The, for, what's attached to that, though? COVID. You see what I'm saying? That's what exactly what So what to. happened was when COVID hit, Somebody design, decided to create a marketing strategy mm. to tell you that CMOS will cure COVID. Mm, most definitely. And it's a fallacy. And that. people believed it. Yeah. But the reason why it helped benefit with COVID is because it's very high in iodine. If Now, this may be controversial. First of all, what is COVID? That what I, look, that was my neck. Hold up. <laughs> Forget the CMOS, oh. We ain't even talking about the sea boss no more. That's done. That's old will. Let's go to the COVID because I'm very interested on you explaining COVID. Well, I really, guess what? You need to be careful what you say because a lot of people trust what you say. Absolutely. So, COVID. So, to me, from my studies and understanding, I was able to cure over 600 cases of it. And I say that lightly. Let's say I helped people along the way because uh -huh. saying words like cure get you killed. You know what I'm saying? But I understood that, first of all, when you say virus, you got to understand what's a virus and a bacteria. So Gideon's Army was, it was created from studying epidemiology. So epidemiology is the study of uh, communicable diseases. So a communicable disease is something like AIDS, herpes, things yeah. of that nature. You see what I'm saying? So COVID was operating like a communicable disease. So a communicable disease being a virus has to have a host mm -hmm. and it cannot exist outside of a host mm -hmm. when we're speaking of virus. Now, bacterias can. Yeah. So I can put a bacteria on that table. Everybody come in here, touch the table. They're infected. Uh. I can't put a virus on the table Ooh. and everybody touch it and be infected. So that's like if somebody has AIDS and put spills their blood on this table, it's a very small window for that blood to infect you. Once yeah. oxygen hits it and it starts to oxidize, there is no more virus. So how can I cough and put a virus in the <laughs> atmosphere? <laughs> Look, hold on, true. And this, this, this is going to be a good question for you, and you probably ain't going to answer it. What's that? If you had to vote, if you just, your dying day and you had to vote, mm -hmm. are you voting for Trump or Joe Biden? I wouldn't vote for either one of them. I, I know you wouldn't. 
You know oh, I knew he would cut. I, 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 I only know why I asked that. You know, I don't even like, know. I don't even know why I asked that. That's like somebody I gotta die, and then you I don't even know me, why I asked that. You telling me to pick a knife or a gun? I only know why. That's I what asked I'm, that. gonna do. I'm gonna look at you and say you do what you gotta do. <laughs> oh, like so, my death ain't gonna be on my. I don't even know why I asked yours. that. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I, I I look at it like this again. All of that is theatrics. If you understand, first of all, when we speaking, of, we you, we talked about business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In business, do the president own the business or do he work for the business? He work for the business. That's what I would think. What I would say. So who owned the business? Who owned the business of America? The higher up, the the same people. Who's the higher ups? From? I don't. I'm. Do you have you ever heard of know. the three city states? Nope. So the three city states, it's three three. It's only three sovereign places on this entire planet. What's that? Everything else can be co- colonized or subjugated due to what they call the doctrine of discoveries of the Papal Bull of 1492 or 1493. How the hell do you keep all this shit in your head? That's what I want. Because know. I'm a no so no no. I, all, I respect it. Yeah. So first of all, intelligence or IQ, you see what I'm saying, has to do with the ability to recall what you know. Yeah. So. Me saying I'm smart just mean I got a good memory. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because that don't mean you're intelligent. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? It's a bunch of high IQ ignorant fools. Facts. You see what I'm saying? So I'm just able to recall things that I put in my lockbox of my mind. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But so the doctrine of discoveries allowed them to do what they're doing. So the three city states are the Vatican, mm-hmm. which controls the entire spiritual system of the world. Mm-hmm. London City, which controls the economic system of the world. Okay. And then Washington, D.C., which is the world's military. Ask yourself yourself this. Why is the United States military, why do they have a base on every continent? <laughs> do you see? The, you tell me. Do you see the Koreans with a base in America? I'm, I'm here to learn tonight. But what I'm saying is you don't see. <laughs> you know what you I'm don't saying? see. Korean army bases all over the world. You don't see yeah, yeah. France unless it's in their territory. So you may see a France base in Africa because they colonize certain sectors of that. You may see uh-huh. one in Haiti because they colonize certain sectors Real quick. of that. Oh, well, uh, this is look. Guess what? I'm so happy. You, I'm so happy he's here tonight because I get to. So now Africa. Mm-hmm. Let's go to Africa. Are we from Africa, or mm-hmm. where are we from, or what the hell? Not everybody. You know what I'm saying? So being black has nothing to do with being African. Okay. And people will argue until they teeth sore. But if you understand, if you say black people are the original people, mm-hmm. and if you are we the original people? That's debatable. But what I will say is that I'm 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 asking my I'm asking the truth. To, like if we going by what's been discovered, then yes. Okay. But also it was a when they talk about mitochondria, mitochondrial DNA. That yeah, you know I mean, it was every cell started from one cell. Mm-hmm. So we're a singular cell, singular cell organism that has grown into what we consider ourselves as hu- humans. Okay. So when we talk in black, it ain't got nothing to do with your skin tone. So people, you first of all, melanin is a word that was given to you by a, a white. So, so that ain't even. It was a white man came up with that. It's, it's like, actually it, a God. but but up. That's just like Christian Jesus. That it, even the people like me that believe in the black Jesus. I'm always say the black Jesus. Um, he never even said nothing about Christian. It was the so called the people in Antioch. First of all, he never wrote no books. First of all, even saying the word Christ, who is Christoph Serapis? <laughs> Tim. I'm That's trying, the original I'm Christ. Coming, I'm coming to get, <laughs> I'm trying to get some information. Yeah. These are really questions I want to know. Yeah. I know the people want to know, but so, a lot of this stuff is just I want to know. So, we, you know, a lot of stuff goes back to Egypt and they talk about Exodus. Like, like that's why I asked you about the five books. Who wrote the first five books of the Bible? Allegedly Mo, Moses, which is considered the Torah or the Tanakh. So Moses wrote the five, first five books of the Bible. So how did Moses being born in the late Bronze Age, which is what they call prehistory. Mm-hmm. So prehistory means before the written age, meaning nobody wrote books. Facts. So how did Moses write a book <laughs> and nobody when was were, writing books? And they were writing books at the time. They were using tablets. And they was like, well, it was on the scrolls. So now you say, what scrolls? People are like to say the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls wasn't found until like 1792 or something. Like, so the uh, Napoleon... 
uh, is the reason why oh, Napoleon Hill or Nap- Napoleon? Napoleon Bonaparte. Okay, yeah, you know I'm well, saying no, nah, not Napoleon. Just, not the, the Napoleon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Napoleon Bonaparte. So okay, he, he actually, yeah, you know I'm saying he the one who shot the noses off the Finks and all of that stuff. Yeah, but they allegedly found what they call the Rosetta Stone inside the foot of the Finks. But not, notice that you got to ask yourself. They keep talking about these discoveries. Who is discovering it? Mike, and so where how we does come it from? benefit that? Let me let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. And, and boy, you got me thinking tonight. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he got my mind. Guess where you come from? You come from Earth. Okay. How is a human built? I I've heard somebody say the sun beamed down and built a human. I was, you know, all of that is 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 subjective. The 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 root answer to all of these questions is we don't know. Oh, see that why that's why I trust you. I trust you because everybody wouldn't have said that. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know how humanity started. Okay. We don't know when humanity started. We don't know what God. I'm created. satisfied tonight. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, right. No, I'm just you mm. just satisfied me so much tonight. It don't make no sense mm. because. Everybody wouldn't wouldn't have said that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But see, a lot of people because people like to argue. Yeah, you see what I'm saying. And no disrespect to the Hebrew Israelites, but they will argue your draws off your ass. Ooh, they, uh, you know what I'm saying because they be on Jefferson and man, on, they be they, they be like on to argue, they be on Broadway, but, but they want to use the same books that who that are they though? Us. But who are let me, so who, do you know well? Who are they? I keep them, asking them you questions. Like, I should just give you the answer. I'm just so, I'm, I'm coming for answers Hebrews today. Hebrews are actually the Hyksos. So the Hyksos are actually Asians who colonized Africa, and if again. Google, you might not want to believe me. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> but I, I'm just a street nigga who learned a few things. So <laughs> I'm just my a thing street nigga who learned a few things. The Hyksos are the Hebrews. Okay. So if you saying the Hebrews were black, what no Hebrews? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Prior to the Hyksos coming from Asia and colonizing Africa, they were in the Nile Valley and all of that. And first of all, when we even talk about Hebrews, what it's a place called the Arabian Peninsula. Mm-hmm. This is where Jesus allegedly come from. This mm-hmm. is where Muhammad come from, okay. which is Medin and uh, Mecca. Like so, you got Mecca, in the, which would be considered the southern parts of the Arabian Peninsula. Then you got Jerusalem and um, and Bethlehem and things that are up there at the northern part by the coast. Okay. And this is in Israel. Which, first of all, Israel doesn't exist. You got Pakistan, mm. and that's another thing that they fight. That was a created mm. place. And people, so people say, well, how can God not be real if all these prophecies are coming true? Ask yourself this. If you write a book that talks about how this dude going to die on this date, and you are financially able to purchase someone's death, but it don't never lead back to you. So now on this date, dude get killed just like you said. Now you a prophet. When in really, why do we use a double you tongue? You just had it done yourself. But why do we use a double tongue? Like if you Google any word, they'll give you two definitions for it. The reason why is because the American language is a trigonometry language. That's why if I'm saying two, what am I saying? Am I saying two, two, or two? You said I'm at the number two? To too much, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. A to do list. Which two am I speaking of? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. If I say heard, if I say heard, what am I talking about? You would think since we on a podcast that did you hear me? Yeah, but or it could yeah, be I heard a herd, herd of sheep. Of people, yeah, yeah. Of, it's of, a of, double speak. Yeah, it's called double speak for a reason to create confusion. So translation is based off of ignorance in the first place. So what is that? So so, and and I'm just talking about. In, in in the black community, what is our biggest confusion? What is the biggest thing that's throwing us off? Would you say? This is going to be controversial, but to be honest with you, that's to all me, the shows about controversy. To me, anyway. the biggest thing that is misleading us and separating us is everybody's worshiping God and instead of thriving to be God. Ooh. Instead of worshiping something, Thrive, because Jesus never told you to worship him. I'm going to tell you something. And uh, like I said, 
Kenny Pagan said this. He was uh, Kenny Pagan was saying that one time he was talking to Jesus, and I can't believe it's not, but a cloud came in front of him, mm-hmm. and he didn't know what to do. And he was just like, he said, "I rebuke you in the name of Jesus." But anyway, Jesus said this. He said, "I'm glad you did something because I couldn't do nothing." Mm-hmm. And so, and that's what I'm saying. When it when when it comes to stories like this, it's showing me like that. They they waiting on God when God waiting on you to do take care. If 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 God Mike True don't go, if time. Mike True don't don't open up that 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 restaurant every day. Why was Jesus called the Son of Man? Why? Because God already gave you everything. <laughs> you are yeah. Jesus. Yeah. You the one sent back to That's heal your I blood. I feel like it. You get what I'm saying. But the problem here is. We live in a worship culture. Mm-hmm. This goes back to that double speak warship. I told you everything is based on war culture. Yeah, like even the word worship, all of that goes back to war culture. You see what I'm saying? Gospel. When you hear the, somebody say gospel, you immediately think of gospel music or, or the, the word or the of God. Word. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gospel means a military story being presented to the emperor. That's what a gospel is. That's why the gospel of <laughs> Titus was telling his story of him conquering and subjugating people. Is that why we watching our words? Well, who who is they? Who is who's watching their words? What you mean? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying. But you know, the Bible tells you in the beginning there was the I'm word, just, the word was with God and the word was God. Okay, you know the you Bible. See what I'm saying? You so, know. See, that's the thing. For me, I don't believe because I know. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Most well, people don't yeah. even know what a theologian is. They I'm, don't know what you theology got me is. Tonight. I'm trusting you. Yeah. You got me. <laughs> you, so, you know what I'm saying? So, I might you know, think, oh, but you got me. Everybody you know believe, but who actually knows? So people tell me they believe in all of these things. Thanks. Where did you get that information Where's from? Yeah. Have you dissected it for right. yourself? So let me just say this. I was an adamant Jesus follower. Okay. That's Ooh. how I came to where I was at to understand because they through moms and the now, honestly no because my daddy never really cared about that my mom and them didn't either my my granny did but what it was is I went to jail and when I went to jail I had told myself I always wanted to read the Bible yeah so I took the time where I'm. Ain't got, jail, ain't got nothing else to do. Let's read I it. wanted to read the Bible front to back. Yeah. So I started having little circles. I remember I had Chine. I had little Chine over there reading Chine. the Bible. You was in Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Where you at that Chine? Ask Chine. We got circles and stuff. Yeah, you, look, you, you in jail creating circles. Man, I got Bible everybody wise. in here, you know what I'm okay. saying, reading the Bible. <laughs> talking about, you know what I'm saying, doing the right thing. You know what I mean? I'm... Any nigga doing bad shit in our pod, I'm putting them on the dough. Like, we, we, we governing ourselves accordingly in here. You know what I'm saying? So, I, so when I got out, man, there's a brother named Tony Delano, man. Shout out to Tony Delano, man. He, uh, uh, on the company, uh, Cairo Wolf. Uh-huh. He did a lot of, he do, all uh, he did the paper, all star, everybody's album cover. Facts. You remember Cairo? Uh, I don't his remember, name, Tony Delano. He used mm-hmm. to do everybody's, he used to be ebb tight. But, um, I was sitting in there. We was working on my album cover, and I just got out. And he know me from <laughs> doing running the streets and and stuff. So I got to talk. He's like, "I'm so glad you found something <laughs> other than what you was doing." Real quick, true. I gotta sit because it just hit me like a ton of bricks. What's that? Just thinking about it. Give me your top five rappers in Nashville, Tennessee. Top five. I see you always <laughs> ask everybody. I ain't man. have to ask you. You, uh, you rap, nigga. Top rap. five rappers. Give me your give me your top five. Well, um, I'm not gonna go in no specific order. Okay, you but to. to be honest with you, the my favorite rapper from the city, a lot of people be scared to say that man's name, man. Ooh. Young Buck. Oh, Young that's Buck. my guy. Yeah, Young I, Buck, I remember to me, Buck. He been Buck, did you put a hit out on me? But go ahead. Man, he said, man, back <laughs> with that uh detail, that what he say, uh I can't remember what he said. He was saying something, but um, no, nah, Buck is Buck, Buck, Buck is Buck. He been flowing since way, day one. Buck, Buck, Pistol, Pistol. Uh, and I never really listened to his music, but you know what I'm saying. I respect him. Uh, All Star, you know what I'm great saying? three. And, uh, who else, man? That made like real impact. Man, to be honest with you, it's a lot of people who are hidden gems. It's a dude named C Four. Man, shout out to C4. I don't know him, but... Man, you don't know him. C4, C4 the God. That's your... C4 the you know what I mean? You got one more. Uh, you got one more. It's going to be hard on you. 
East, North, South, West is going to be hard on Wicked Material. Man, Ooh. Wicked material. Shout CP. out to CP House. You know I'm two Wicked Material. Two guns shooting for five minutes, surrounded by fire, and we walk in the live. Five minutes. This ain't no movie you would not survive. Five minutes. Hey, CP hey. used to be 13 Man. years old. Going. We go ride together. But I got to put Quanny in that old, together. So Quanny. I gotta, Quanny, I got to have more of the top Just, five. You can keep, you can keep you going if, if you want got to. to be in there. You know what I'm saying? You can't never have that conversation you without Quanny. You cannot yeah, I mean. have that conversation without cool. Shout out now. to Quan. You know what I'm saying? But man, Wigan Material, man, they was they were hard, man. Hey, look, and um, I know they probably be mad at me because I don't mention them enough, and I'm Wigan Material. Yeah. But it's kind of like this with me, true. Like when you DMG, <laughs> uh, it's kind of like when you brag on your own people, they kind of like. Make you like, oh, you just saying it because of them, but Wicked Material was. Nah, man. High CNCP was Ooh, going, man. We hey, going to ride together. Time, man. Hey, that was the anthem. That was the anthem, man. That was the anthem. That was the anthem. Was the anthem. And so, look, True, this is what I want, uh, I want from you tonight because we done went through. Ooh, this, I really enjoyed, you know, everything we talked about. And we're going to, you, you'll be here a lot, but um, encourage the city on, right there in the camera, on something we need to be doing just to kind of. Keep it together and get it together. Man, the first thing you need to do is seek knowledge of yourself. You know what I mean? Outside of the ideologies and the religions that was given to you, stop being so judgmental. Stop thinking that you already made it when we still in the same fishbowl. Facts. So what I could tell people is to be a real community is to have a common unity. And the common unity should be Food, shelter, clothing, and a safe way of living. Facts. You see what I'm saying? Like, life ain't about what you think it is. Like, birds don't sit around wondering if they feathers are pretty. You see what I'm saying? So I think it's too many people focused on materialism instead of using the materials to build. Mm -hmm. So it was a reason why they were called masons. You need to learn how to be a builder of men. You know what I'm saying? A fisherman of men. That's what Facts. Jesus was. Yeah. So I think that as a... A community, we find a common unity, which is safety and security. And once we learn that, all of that other stuff will fall in place. But until we remove these thoughts that have been given to us by the same people who oppress us, we won't ever know what it's like to stand with each other. So I don't care what you believe in. I don't care what you know or don't know. I still love you because you exist. Right. So when you yeah. talk about blacks and whites and all of these if if God allegedly created everything, then why are we judging what God created? <clears throat> hey, look. One of my highlights, and I and I and I want to say this to the camera. One of my highlights of doing what I do is bringing the people here with knowledge, and um, the authentic people that's actually doing something in the community. Uh, Mike True has spoke up to, for the community in a way that, I mean, I can count two or three, mm. even if I'm gonna say that, and ain't and ain't being it and ain't folded on what he believe in, and 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 that's the honor about doing podcasts that I had I, I I got the honor of having these guys on here, and I'm here to learn. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, um, I understand, um, most of the morals of life is to be open and honest to learn what you don't know. I'm not going to ever come argue with you about something that I understand you done studied for five, six, seven, eight, nine years. I'm going to just learn. And and if I'm going to um, choose to believe it or not, I'm going to go do my research first. Yeah. But see, the thing about research is that even researching, you got to know how to research. Search, yeah, Just yeah. Googling was Jesus real? Yeah, that's it's, a, it's just it's just a, you know what yeah. I'm saying that ain't it's gonna, gonna be lead what, you where you yeah. So you should ask specific questions. Yeah, yeah, you know I'm saying when was the first time the word Jesus was documented Minute. into humanity? Yeah, and you'll find out that it may not lead you back to what you thought of. Ooh. So the first time anybody spoke of Jesus, like I said, it was the Pauline epistles. Mm. So this was fifty to one hundred and fifty years after Jesus's alleged death. Mm. So now ask yourself, why are we in 2024? Why was there a zero point? Time counted down. How did that work? How did we know the time to count down and then Jesus's uh, birth gave us a zero point 
And now, because we got what they call uh, AD and BC. You got yeah. before Christ or <laughs> before the common era, uh, yeah. and then Anio Dominio or after death. Yeah. So how did that happen? Because the Greeks and the Romans controlled it, and they still control it to this day. That's why I say it's the emperor who never died. Find out who Vespasian is. Find out who Titus is. Yeah. Find out who Constantine is. Yeah. Find out who the Caesarian family was. See, people think of Caesar and think it was one person. It was a dynasty. Mm. Caesar was a title like saying king. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So you had Julius Caesar. You had Augustus Caesar. Caesar. You get what I'm saying? Now, what two months sound like that? Julius, Augustus, what two months sound like that? Oh, July and August. July, July, they August. back to back, right? Yeah. Both so if you understand these gods, you see what I'm saying? They 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 stood back to back. So July and August are back to back. Julius Caesar was, once he was uh, murdered, uh -huh. Augustus came into place. So Augustus followed Julius. Yeah. So July, then August came. So when we looking at a calendar, we're going by a Gregorian calendar system. So when you studying and you really trying to go back and find dates, the day it was confused. It's called backdating. Real quick. The dates will be wrong. Real quick before we go. And um man, we can go. I can go for another. Man, I got a question. <laughs> yeah, I, I, hey, okay, hey, go ahead. Hey, what's up with those the the whole thirteen month thing? Have you ever heard that? Yeah, I heard about okay. that. So that's a Ethiopian. Good, good job. That's on the Ethiopian calendar. So uh, originally, but it's 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 constantly shifted. So we used to operate on a lunar calendar prior to the sun worship coming into play. And this is what God that you know of now is a sun God. That's why if you study, if you look at the mother Mary, if you look at Buddha, if you look at, uh, uh, different Islam stuff, they, they'll show you, um, like this disc over the head. You know what I'm saying? We, we call them halos or whatever, but that disc simplifies sun worship. So what we did was we switched from a lunar calendar to a sun calendar. The problem with that is the sun doesn't have a cycle. The moon does. Mm -hmm. So the moon goes through an eight-phase cycle consistently since the beginning of time as we know it. You go through waning, waxing, the gibbous, you know what I mean, yeah. to the full moon, half moons, all of that. So we were able to know the seasons and the times by how many full moons we have went through. Yeah. So it's like 28.5, 29 days in each lunar cycle. Okay. So what about the time? Okay. So good, good. time so, was created. So, so, so what about the time? But time don't exist. If, if we, if we doing one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, that don't exist. So time is a agreement. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Time is really, really time was created for labor. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So that I could actually monetize what you're making, how long I can keep you wow. working. Cause yeah. we used to do from sun up to sun down. You see what I'm saying? It wasn't a time and that shifted depending on what type of, wh whether we were in the winter solstice or mm -hmm. the, the, the spring equinox. That's why the longest day in, in the world is during the winter solstice. You see what I'm saying? Or the longest night. You see what I'm saying? So, so why do we have to consume to time? We, cause it's a it's a design. Okay, it goes back to again. Okay. I, I, no. Why do you, why do like you pay that. taxes? Why do you pay taxes? It's a design, I guess. Why do you pay tithes? It's a design. You get what I'm saying? But who designed it? The Greeks and the Romans. We are still. And that's why I told you the three city states. Who controls the spiritual system? The Vatican. The Vatican has never been audited. And I don't give a fuck if you the CIA, FBI, president, whoever the fuck you are. You cannot go to the Vatican without permission from the Vatican. Wow. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you ain't yeah. stepping on their property. Ain't without nobody them. going over there blowing up nothing. Ain't nobody going over there. They got eight, nine, ten miles of underground tunnels where they destroyed the, the library of Timbuktu, the library of Alexandria. They took all of our ancient knowledge so they know who you are. You see what I'm saying? You done heard a lot of people trying to tell you that. They know who you are. You yeah. don't know who you are. Yeah. So... If you find out who you are, the entire paradigm that we exist in will change because we create this reality, hmm. whether you believe it or not. So when people say that they are God, they don't mean that they are this God that is in this book. They mean that you wake up and you were given the gifts to govern the reality as you see it. Okay. Like think about our hood. It used to be certain figures in our community that whatever they say, 
that's what the community gonna do. Let's give a big name, uh, real quick. See, I can I can keep going on, but I got I got okay. We we gonna give a uh, I'm 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 gonna give you um, I want you to give me a big name. If um if you're giving me a big name on the level of who you agree with, can you give me one? Yeah, I'm I'm just saying like the the Dr. Umar's and all these people and uh, uh Boyce Watkins and all these people. If 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 Mike True is giving me a name on a big level, what are you kind of agreeing with? And I ain't well, saying it's, I, I know you I, agree I, with nobody. I know you got your own. Well, I, like I said, so I, who you like? It's who you like? Of, you know what I mean? I respect all of these brothers. Okay. I feel like everybody has their own mission. You okay, see what I'm saying me so, too. Or they, let me take this 100%. back. Everybody has their own purpose, but 100%. the mission should always be the same. And I think everybody has the same mission. They just don't see how that's going to be fulfilled. Okay. And separatism is not ever going to fulfill the mission. So trying to disassociate us from white people and make people black and white, you got to think about this. In order to have a nation, you have to have a military. Well, hold up. I got Educate us on, real quick before we go, and we'll go in a minute, and we might not go in a minute. But but real quick, we here, man. so and so it, no it, it educate us on the white and the black and the Mexican, and uh, why do we kind of like think it's a difference in all that? Or what's the difference in all that? It's, what's the difference between white and black? The difference between white and black is a piece of paper. Mm. That's the only difference. Mm. You hear what I'm saying? If nobody ever told you that, would you believe that? See, think about this. Look at a child. Children don't know what hate is until you teach, teach it to them. Teach them that. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So now yeah. we got a bunch of taught fools going around selling something as a truth. So, again, when we speaking of eugenics, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? That's genetics and, and things of that nature. In nature, other species can't mate with other species. You get what I'm saying? And if they do, if they do mate with other species, they produce a sterile uh, uh, species, meaning like a horse mates with a donkey. Yeah. They create a mule. A mule is sterile. You can't mate two mules. They cannot, they can have sex, but they ain't never going to create a child. Yeah. You can mix certain felines together, certain dogs. Like you can mix a, a tiger with a lion. It'll be called a liger. But, that pup that is or that is born from that breeding will be sterile. So if blacks and whites were different on a genetic makeup, then why are there biracial or mulatto people so who can have? Is sex it a con- such thing as bi- biracial relationships? Well, I would say is is well, yeah. You know I mean, I'm a product of a biracial relationship. Yeah. You see what I'm okay. saying? But I also believe that. It was more of a geological location type of thing. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So if you were born below the equator, of course you'll have a darker skin. If you were born above the equator, you'd probably be more pale. Like, name black people who you know that were dark black people that lived in very, very, very cold environments. What happens when you, during the wintertime, even black people, they get lighter. Because it's a cold weather. Your blood it has to do with pigmentation that has to do with oxygen and blood. Is Mike True married a white woman? <laughs> uh, simple I just, answer, I no. just asked it. Okay. No. It's just no. a question? No. Oh, why you? Oh, you look, you would have asked me. Like, I'd have asked some kind of crazy question. I just asked the question. Is Mike True married? No. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, like it was like a but see we got to realize the water question now, but we got to realize now that it goes deeper than that. So, marrying a white person or being in a relationship with a white person, you're marrying in all of her ancestors. So what you're doing is you dealing with the ideology that they've been built on. You get what I'm saying? So to me, I wouldn't put myself in a situation to be fighting for a position in okay. a relationship. Okay. Like, you know, people be like, well, my, you know, my daddy was racist or my granddaddy was racist. Like I, I wouldn't put myself Step in, in that situation. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, but are white people evil? 
that's just like saying black people are evil. Yeah. Now, when we talk about atrocities, that's different. Now, Europeans, so I don't like to say white because white was a created terminology. Europeans and and Frenches and all these other people, they came and colonized the planet. You see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. And it was split up. That's why you notice you got Spain, which is giving you your the so-called Mexicans, Portuguese, all of these people. You got the French, yeah. and then you got the English. You get what I'm saying? You got the Dutch. All of these people went around the world dividing it like a pie. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Show me where Africa, where black Africans or whatever you want to call it, indigenous people went around the world doing that. Okay, let me ask you a question then on that. So how is Mike True uh, protecting his energy? As in, like, where you go? Uh, my energy protected no matter where I go. I could go to hell and still be in heaven. <clears throat> so the thing is, that's why I say that's relative to you. Well, I'm just, yeah, I'm yeah. just, you know yeah. what I mean? I'm so just coming me, to get some no information from you. I'm, at, I'm still me. You okay. see what I'm saying? So you can put me in any situation, situation and I don't have to protect it because it's it's, it's like a, a auto type of thing. Like, it do it itself. Like I said, I'm first of all, I'm not. But you be don't really go nowhere though. Yeah, but I done been a lot of places. But you don't really. I'm, t- I'm saying, I'm saying the mic true now. Yeah, we coming, Mike. You coming from rap? You come from. You talking about like going out in the? I'm city? just saying, just period. You ain't. You don't go out no more. Yeah, but if so, I how do, do you choose where you go? Cause you don't. Well, I just went out this weekend. I went and seen Black Rob new little spots over there. But I just, you know, shout out to Black Rob. He, he yeah, does, he does. but to me yeah, personally, my guy. It just ain't nothing there for me. You okay. see what I'm saying? So okay. a lot of times I just, it ain't nothing to protect because it ain't nothing there that that arouses my curiosity. Like I don't do hookah. I ain't Why is Mike like True not married? Because I know what it's like to be married. So that's a contract. I don't need no more type of contracts that are Is Mike True ever getting married again? Uh, No. Woo, not, what? Not, uh, not. Oh, come the, on. You got some on that. Oh, you married? Not a, from a traditional <laughs> standpoint, but I was married before. You know what I'm saying? I was with my ex-wife for 18 years. So I realized that it's contractual law. So marriage has nothing to do with what you think it has to do with. And you find that out in a courtroom when you find yourself fighting for it. I'm existence. trying to get educated on it before I get married. Yeah. I, ain't, I ain't with I nobody say, or nothing, but I'm just. I would say this, that if you are going to get married, you need to understand contractual law. What's that? What's that? Contractual law means understanding contracts. Marriage is a contract or a license. That goes back to when I was talking about how black people or indigenous people built everything. And then they came in and made us teach them and then created permits and licenses that pushed us out. You have to have a contractor's license. Yeah. You have to have a building permit. Yeah. You have to have a fishing license. <laughs> That's a lot. A driver's That's license. A bit, that's a bit much. But guess what? We was driving before we were permitted. Okay, you so what? what so look, and I want you to. What about those that that new thing with those guys? To my thing, I had no license, no tag. What are they called? You talking about the sovereign? The uh, sovereign, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, with you being who you are, mm. is the sovereign off a little bit, or are they on point? That's a loaded question. So they are studying. Ask you call a loaded question. UCC, they they study. I got another loaded you know question if you want it, but go ahead. Yeah, they yeah. so they they operating up under what they call jurisdiction. Okay, you see what I'm saying. So everything has a jurisdiction, but we got to understand that even the jurisdiction that they are attempting to use to classify themselves as a national or as a you know what I'm saying a entity that is was given by God, not by man through a straw man system. Okay. We still, it's like you're trying to prove yourself to the system that designed you can't beat, it. You can't beat it. You see what I'm saying? You can't beat that and system, then right? And again, we got to ask ourselves that if we were out, that's why I asked you, why do we pay taxes? It goes back to the emperors. A taxation has to do more with, with colonization and conquering than it has to do with infrastructure or sustainability. So when we talking about that, these powers that be, if we were to decide today, like, you know what? We're not paying taxes. We finna work and we're going to build our own nations and all this. Mm-hmm. They'll start killing you. Mm-hmm. So think about this. You can talk all this law shit you want. Who controls the guns? Who controls the buttons that can blow the world up? 
So no matter what your law says, they're going to buck the system. Once, once they can't beat you in the courtroom, that's why the laws change every year. Yeah, right. Like as soon as we figure the system out, they create a new system. And it's been like that for time and time again. So no matter what you think you know, they'll still shoot you just because they can. Before we go, before we go, are we in a lose-lose situation? Only until we le learn what unity is. Because when you talk of Google, how many military uh, people are in the U.S. military? It's it's like 2 million. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Only probably 500 to 750,000 of those are actual soldiers. So we got like probably 2.2 .2 million, 2.4, somewhere around there of actual what we call military. Now, only 500 to 700,000 of those are actual soldiers. Everybody else are cooks, engineers, mm -hmm. something of that nature. Now, how many people are on the planet? You get what I'm saying? How many people yeah. are in America? Right. So how are we letting 10 million people control 10 billion people or 9 billion people? So mm. once we realize that we can paint our own reality, but we got to get rid of the information that we're building with. You see what I'm saying? We got crooked nails. We got broken hammers. We got, you know what I'm saying? We got to, we working with a, with a, a warped sense of thought and security. Like it's people who literally go to college and put Greek letters on. Mm. And now they stumping around. No disrespect. Hollering ski weeds. No, and all that shit. no disrespect at but, all. You know what I'm saying? You are an African-American, black, indigenous American, more, whatever you want to call yourself. But you are have branded a Greek symbol on your arm. And when you understand what the Greeks did, what the Romans did, and all of that, to me, even when you studying, like everybody's into the stock market now. Everybody yeah, wants to yeah. be a stock market. I'm not, guru. but everybody is. But just do so you know that? Lame. But it's Greek stuff in that. Like in order to understand Wall Street, it's a Greek element attached to that too. It's called Google, what Greeks are in trading or stocks. What are mm. Greeks? It's theta, beta. It's even in your, in your, what we call the alphabet. That's the alpha beta. You see what I'm saying? Like we are so brainwashed by Greek and Roman that we don't even know it's right there in your face. It's called hiding in plain sight, man. So until we realize that we have the ability to redesign the world as we see it, but you can't do it from a place of hatred. And that is what Jesus tried to teach you. Hmm. Love is the answer. Ooh. And when I say that, love embodies every spectrum of emotion. You see but, what I'm saying? Like yeah. sadness lives in love. Anger lives in love. love. You see what I'm saying? You name any emotion and I can it's show you where love. love can attach to that. If you smack my child, you think I'm going to show you how much I love my child. <laughs> if, hold up. If you alive, subscribe. Uh, until next time, <laughs> I'm inspired tonight, and let's go. Ah! <laughs>